emotional blockages stop us from being the powerful manifester that we were born to be. So let's talk about that as we go through the full moon eclipse in Taurus. Welcome to the Mainly Moonology podcast. I'm your host, Yasmin Boland, an award-winning astrologer and the Sunday Times best-selling author of books including Moonology and creator of the Moonology Oracle Cards. My intention for this podcast is to help you understand how you can create your dream life using Mainly Moonology, the moon, as your guide. So welcome to the Mainly Moonology podcast for another week. And this week is another big one because we're going to get the full moon eclipse in the sign of Taurus, which by the way is a sign of abundance. Moreover, we're actually going to be having a Mars-Jupiter opposition and a Mercury-Jupiter opposition. So it's a really, really intense time, but it's also a really good time for clearing emotional blockages. And why would you want to do that? Well, obviously, because, you know, if you are emotionally blocked, you can't live your best life. It's really as simple as that. So maybe it's something that happened to you in the past, a long time ago. Maybe it's something that happened quite recently. But if you are feeling as though you are emotionally blocked, as though your emotions are stuck, even dare I say, if you're feeling a little bit emotionally constipated, I know that doesn't sound nice, but it's a really good way to express it. Really, an eclipse week is a time to just let it all go. Now, why do we want to clear our emotional blockages? Is it just so we feel better? Well, actually, kind of. <laughs> because if you know anything about manifesting and you know anything about the law of attraction, you know that it's all about feeling good. Okay, so the better you feel, the better you will be as a manifester. The better you feel, the more powerful your desires are going to be and the more likely they are to come true. The better you feel, the more easily, the easier it's going to be for you to just send your desires out into the universe, whether you're even thinking about it or not, okay, and you will start to manifest your dreams. Now, one thing that occurs to me as we talk about this, and I know I go on about it all the time, but it's something I was taught by a teacher many, many years ago, my first meditation teacher, kind of a crazy lady she was actually, I won't go into it, but um, she used to talk about, I don't know why, but it's it worked, the idea worked. She used to talk about how we had elephants <laughs> sort of in our body. She referred to emotional blockages as elephants, which I'm not really sure why she called it that, but somehow the analogy worked. And she used to say that by meditating, we would free these elephants. I suppose maybe these elephants were stampeding through our emotions. Again, I know it's a weird sort of analogy, but she used to talk about how meditating would free up the elephants so they could, you know, storm off to wherever they needed to be instead of being stuck like emotions inside us. Another way you can look at it if elephants is a bit too weird for you is that all the traumas and dramas that we have, and I'm talking about, like they say, you know, trauma with a capital T and trauma with a small T, big traumas, little traumas, upsets, dramas, little bicker fests that we can have with people, anything like that. You can also think of them as knots. You know, think of them as a short piece of string with a, a knot in them. And meditation loosens the knot and, uh, and then they start to, you know, completely undo the knot and it becomes just a piece of string and it can, again, it can kind of float off into the ethers. So meditating is always really, really important for clearing emotional blockages, but so too is simple intention. So let's just talk quickly about what a full moon eclipse is and its astrological significance. Okay, so a full moon eclipse is what they call a lunar eclipse and it takes place when the sun and the moon are on exactly opposite sides of the zodiac. And so this month, we are, or this week, we are getting the full moon eclipse in Taurus. Okay, and that's going to be taking place. I'll just give you the times really quickly from my Moonology diary. London, October 28 at 9.24 p.m. Sydney, October 29 at 7.24 a.m. 
LA, October 28 at 1.24 p.m. And New York is October 28 at 4.24 p.m. So astrologically, a full moon eclipse is a time to turn the corner. And it's very much a time when all the emotions come up, okay? So full moons always bring up all our emotions. And a full moon eclipse does that on steroids. And the whole point of working with the eclipse the way we do here in moonology is to release those emotional blockages, which are stopping you from living the life you deserve and the living the life that you incarnated here to create. Because emotional blockages stop us from being able to recognize what blocks we have that are stopping us from feeling worthy of our dreams okay there are going to be you're going to have some emotional blockages more than likely almost everybody does and we have to clear them on a regular basis and as I said that can be meditation chanting exercise the decision intention but you know it's about the full moon eclipse brings up even emotions and even hidden emotions to the surface think about how everybody always talks about people going crazy at the full moon it's because all our emotions come up and we either deal with them or we don't so just think for a moment you know where do you feel that you're emotionally blocked is it when it comes to your abundance do you feel like you have it you've got emotional blockages around that maybe it's about relationships maybe you feel emotionally blocked because of that maybe it's to do with your dream job and you feel emotionally blocked about that you feel you're not good enough you feel you don't have what it takes whatever it is really focus on that this week as we get the full moon eclipse and start to let it go now I will be doing a full moon eclipse ceremony Actually, on my Facebook page, Yasmin Boland Moonology will get you there, and on the events page of my Yasmin Boland page, and also on the Hay House page. So that's going to be a time where we're really going to work on releasing these together. The other thing to mention briefly is that the full moon eclipse is taking place around the same time as a Mars-Jupiter opposition and a Mercury-Jupiter opposition. So on the one hand, as it says in my Moonology diary, in fact, there is a big risk we're going to get very emotional and say too much around the time of the eclipse okay but on the other hand it could be that this eclipse helps us to detox a situation that's become very murky perhaps we can get a change of perspective or we're finally free to have a conversation that frees us up from a situation that's been dragging us down if you're going through a rough time please take heart Although this eclipse season, like all eclipse seasons, can be difficult, especially if the eclipse is hitting your chart hard, everything that happens at the time of an eclipse nearly always works out for the best. And I know that's hard to believe sometimes. Sometimes you think, well, this is can't possibly be for the best. But guess what? It actually can be. All right. Now, another thing to mention that's really important is if you did identify with the idea of having money blocks, then that's really something to work on this week because Taurus is the sign that is all about money. If you think about, I always refer to it because it's such a good example, um, the bull of Wall Street. There's an amazing statue down the bottom of Wall Street uh, outside the stock exchange, I think it is, in New York City. And uh, it's about, uh, it's a Taurian bull. It's a very Taurian bull and Taurus is all about creature comforts and also about the money that we need in order to create the comfortable life that we're dreaming of. So in particular, um, when you do your full moon work or if you join me on, on Facebook, bring any abundance issues you have and the intention to let them go and start to think about where they set in, where they came from and uh, set the intentions of letting us, letting them go. And also note that the Mars opposite Jupiter uh, and the Mercury opposite Jupiter uh, dynamics we have 
this week are really important because they're going to help us to really step into taking action and they're also going to help us if we don't say too much we can actually learn to look on the bright side and looking on the bright side is so important again I'll refer you to the um, Abraham Hicks emotional guidance system which states that you know it's better to be angry than it is to be in despair it's better to be joyous than it is to be angry and it's a sliding scale that goes upwards from um, I think fear to joy and if you can use this eclipse to try and let go of the negative change the way you're thinking change your attitudes towards finances in particular but also even to do with matters to do with the heart can be triggered now because Taurus is ruled by the love planet Venus so it's really an important eclipse season and please note that as we get to the full moon eclipse this month we are going to actually be out of the eclipse season. It's been a very short one. It started two weeks ago with the new moon eclipse in Libra. Now it's going to end with the full moon eclipse in Taurus. And uh, and, and so it's really a time to make the most of the energies because eclipses can very much act as catalysts for change and for transformation. It's a time where we can uh, make big changes in our life. Sometimes if you're really off the path that your soul incarnated to live this, this lifetime, eclipses can be very difficult. They can bring about the changes that we know have to happen. You know, if you've got yourself stuck in a toxic relationship or a toxic job or a toxic living situation. Uh, it can be a time where, you know, the SHIT hits the fan and suddenly everything changes. Eclipses do that because if we've wandered off the path that our soul wants to tread for this lifetime, it's sort of like the time where we get slapped back onto the right path. So, you know, just bear all that in mind and just bear in mind the fact that the eclipse season will end with the full moon. So try and make the most of it. So I just want to talk a little bit more about emotional blockages and just how they relate to this eclipse season. So let's define an emotional blockage. Think about when you get triggered. Okay, whenever you get triggered by someone or something, chances are you've got an emotional blockage. So it's really, this is all part of getting to know yourself. So think of the person who triggers you the most, who really triggers you. Okay, and can you see an emotional blockage around that relationship and around that situation and how it affects you? You know, can you see how you are emotionally blocked because whenever that subject comes up, you see red, you get upset, you get or you get depressed or you get angry or whatever. All right, emotional blockages impact our well-being because where we are emotionally blocked, the energy can't flow. And when the energy can't flow, that's when we get stuck in life, which is why at the full moon, it's so important to do forgiveness and release work. And I'll say, I've said it once, I'll say it again, I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it again. Forgiveness doesn't mean what the other person did was okay. It just means you are choosing to move on from it. There's always a scenario where even if someone doesn't say sorry, you can forgive them anyway because you know you don't want to walk around with that emotional blockage anymore because it's literally going to block your life. Because remember, we are creating our life 24-7 with the law of attraction and if you are emotionally stuck, what are you going to be attracting? More emotionally stuck situations. So, you know, again, join me on Facebook for my full moon release ceremony. I'm sorry, I'm not sure exactly what time it is, but it's on my Facebook events page. Or do it yourself at home with by yourself or with friends, but do some forgiveness because nothing releases emotional blockages like forgiveness. And I'm, again, you can forgive. You don't have to forget. You can remember that what someone did to you, you know, you're not happy about it. You don't want to repeat, but you're going to just forgive it and just say, and it can be a bit condescending in a funny way, but it actually works just to say, you know what, you know, that's the best they could manage. And I'm going to just forgive them for that. And, you know, maybe you forget, maybe you don't forget. All right. So really, really important time. Um, and, you know, a little bit of self-reflection and introspection will be required. I'm just going to say that because, you know, people people think, you know, oh, I can just forgive everything that ever happened. But you have to kind of, you almost have to, 
if we go back to the idea of the elephants or the knots inside us, it's almost like it's the decision to let that SHIT go. You know, it's really, really important. And also a bit of self-compassion as well if you know that you're the one who needs forgiveness. Always be prepared to forgive yourself. So, again, that's why the full moon is so powerful this week. Rituals are so important around this time. That's why I'm going to be doing my ritual. I'm really going to encourage you to join me or do your own ritual. Rituals are really assist in emotional healing because what they do is if you have the intention to uh, just say, for example, forgive someone or release some upset under this full moon eclipse because you know it's such a powerful time and you want to let it go, rituals almost ground your intentions. So when I first started to work with the moon, I would talk a lot about um, you know, the importance of forgiveness and the importance of moving on and the importance of letting go is so important. And I remember I had this one email from a reader who said, can you please give us a ritual that we can do that's going to help, you know, this process? And I was like, oh, okay, sure, which is really how I started to do all my rituals on social media, using techniques that I've learned in India, but you can learn them from anywhere. It doesn't have to be my technique. You can do your own technique. You can follow my technique. But what I tend to do is either I, sometimes I do a fire pit out in the garden, which can be really powerful. It's kind of weather permitting. But the idea is that the fire transmutes whatever is going on in your heart emotionally or in your body emotionally and you just put your feelings into the flames and they get transmuted and there's a real power in that. But sometimes I also just do um, chanting because chanting is a way to connect with the divine and with the divine in you. And I'll just give you the chant. In fact, I'll do the chant for you. Um, I'll do it three times. But the full moon chant that I always do is one that I learned at the ashram in India where I've been going to on and off since about 2005. Um, the Sri Narayani Pedam in southern India. It's about two hours from Chennai. And the chant there is very much a chant that's used all over India, but in particular the one at the ashram where I've been going to all these years, it's uh, to the divine feminine. And it's I'll say it first and then I'll chant it three times. And it's really, it's what we'll do at the um, full moon release work I do on Facebook this week. But it's also something you can do anytime, 24-7. And it basically is handing your troubles over to the divine. And, you know, that's really one way that rituals and chanting can help you to release blocks okay it's a technique for healing emotional blockages and letting them uh dissipate untying those knots letting those elephants run free um it can be whether you're forgiving someone else or you're forgiving yourself it's about self-compassion um it's really about doing the chanting because the words or they're actually not words they're vibrations because they're in sanskrit but i'm going to give you some of you know it are basically saying, I surrender to the divine or I surrender to the divine mother. And it's about handing that over to the divine mother and saying, please, you take care of this now. So I'm going to do the chant for you. I know you, many of you know it. Om Namo Narayani. Om Namo Narayani. Om Namo Narayani. So what it means is, I surrender to the divine mother. So I'm just going to chant it three times. And uh, unless you're driving or doing something like that, um, just close your eyes and let it wash over you and make it a first step towards doing the release work this week under the full moon eclipse to help you clear those emotional blockages which can otherwise stand in your way of becoming a very powerful manifesto and which can keep you stuck. So make this your first step that you hand the problems over to the divine. Here we go. Om Namo Nara. Oh, oh. 
and just breathe. And it's when we stop struggling, we stop being in our ego, we stop trying to fix everything ourselves, and when we finally hand our problems over to the divine or over to the part of us that is divine, our higher self, that's when our problems can really start to unravel like those knots of string or like those elephants run free and give us the freedom that we are seeking. Okay, so just to summarize, this week we have the full moon eclipse in the sign of Taurus. Really, I'm encouraging you to use the energy of the full moon eclipse for personal growth and emotional releases, which are going to help you unblock whatever is keeping you stuck. And uh, it's a really, really important time to work with the energies, okay? Don't let this chance pass you by. Thank you for tuning in. It's absolutely wonderful for me to be able to share this with you. I'm sending you lots and lots of love and I look forward to speaking to you next week. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the Mainly Moonology podcast. If you'd like to stay updated with the moon and moonology and astrology and all the other things we cover, be sure to subscribe to the podcast via Apple Podcasts or Spotify. You'll be notified whenever a new episode is up. Also, it would mean a lot to me and my team if you could leave us a glowing five-star review on your podcast platform of choice, please. That actually helps more people find us too, which spreads the love and surely also brings you amazing karma for taking a moment to help us out and to help other people find the podcast. Have a great week and I hope to speak to you next week. Lots of love.